that's kind of where I'm at with ifty this, but I'm I'm definitely open for discussion and, uh, and and I'm done with presenting. So what should we do now? Well, awesome, Kim. First off, I just want to let you know I'm getting lots of good feedback in relationship to uh, enlightening some folks on tools that we weren't aware in ifty this and cool. then spurring on a lot of, of mindset for applications and how to use it and integrate it into the bird plan. Um, I know even myself just sitting here looking at it, I know I'm, I'm a, a Eric's B1, but I don't go out and do frequently as I used to, but man, wouldn't it be nice if I'm coming into an area cold and I'm seeing that summary table of, of options and resources needed to catch it at certain levels. And yeah. The same thing for, you know, places where I might need to slow down or get a little bit deeper black before I start cranking. Um, that those, I think, you know, we, a lot of us have contextually thought of a burn plan as a checklist item, and it's obviously transforming into a new need and or with this yeah. technology gives us a lot more feasibility to gain knowledge going into it and prior to, um, and then obviously when things don't go so well, now I got maybe some things I can put in my list of need to knows, you know, I, I'd like to see how many people I would need or what kinds of resources to catch it. Or do I just drop back to the highway and light it off? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for that PCL, you know, that potential control location, which outlined very well yeah. where the, where the really the, you know, <laughs> the best place might be. So exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's awesome. So um, with that, if anyone has a question for Kim, um, feel free to raise your hand or um, it looks like the gals are handling a lot of the chat box um, nicely, but I'd, I'd like to hear from the rest of the community in terms of um, things you saw today that either didn't make sense or you'd like to see some additional work done on um, to help to help our efforts. Because again, this community is to support you and if it is, is to support you. So I'll just put that pitch out there for folks. I'll open the floor. And I can also, I'm gonna go ahead and log into if it is, um, in case we wanna look at anything while we're visiting here. Sure. Um, I'll just say too, let's see, I'm looking at um, some of the feedback and I'm I'm jotting down all of these great ideas that you all are having for future development, so keep them coming. Um, what about light applications? Right now, no, we are not planning on um, coming out with a version of IFTDIS that can be used um, for tablet or phone. Um, although with FTEM, that has been something that we definitely have um, have considered and worked with the steering committee a little bit on. So not to say that it wouldn't happen in the future, but as of now, I'd say in the short term, um, no on that. Um, geodatabases um, cannot be uploaded into the system, uh, just zipped up shape files, but those shape files can be multi multi-part um do you, real quick on that one brie do you want to talk about we, we can't do it right now but we have talked about connecting to some other agol um options and do you want to mention that like i said i know it's not available right now but we we're yeah talking about it um yep so we have been that so Allowing users to log in to an AGOL account, uh, an agency, agency AGOL account has been on our list of things to do almost from the very beginning of the new application. Um, and, and so we're finally just kind of now um, talking about that with our developers in terms of how we want to implement that. And this is coming up because we do want to allow um, our users to leverage their own um, data in a different way than rather than just having to upload it in the system because that obviously on our side it takes up a lot of storage and there's a lot of maintenance of that rather than letting folks log into their AGOL accounts and say load their values layers if they're doing a risk assessment but the other one that we're really wanting to um, do this for is is allowing folks to use pods you know if their region or their forest or unit has developed pods um, giving them the opportunity to to connect to that data and leverage that and empty this for their fuels planning. So um, we're again, we're just kind of working through with our developers how 
users would leverage the data. Um, this is another area if people have ideas of how they would leverage data if they could log into the, their Forest Service AGOL account. Um, we're going to be looking for feedback on that so we can refine how we implement that functionality in the system. So I'm going to I'm just going to log into FTDS just so this is we have the new um, EAuth login now just so if you haven't logged in in a while. This is kind of how it works. So if you're government, you log in under your PIV card and if you're not government, um, you can use login.gov. So I've got my PIV card in there. It takes me through an extra step just because I have more than one account. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh, Bree. <laughs> um, it, it, oh, there you go. Yeah. Hold on, let me just refresh. It's been sitting there a while. There we go. Okay. I have more than one account, so I have to do the extra click. But um, anyway, yeah, so we're into ifty disk now. So if anyone wants to see anything that I went over, we could certainly pull something up. Um, Some of the nice things so i was going to show you i can show you a few new things that we added um in ifty disk so here's my folder with all of my gi ginormous number of files and this isn't new but if you want to filter the fil people sometimes forget about the filter system up here so if i want to look at just my landscapes that i developed you can see the two i built um the the regular one the 2020 and then the one i edited and anytime you hover over these things uh, the parameters appear on the right so you can get a little more information about um, about your landscape. Same thing with the model outputs. These are all the different model outputs I was playing around with. And again, if you hover over any of these, it'll tell you like this is one of the MTT outputs. You can see your your inputs, your and all your parameters, you know, my four hour burn period. Um, in this case, you can change your spotting probability. I didn't show you that, but that's another thing you can read about in the help system for MTT. Um, landscape fire behavior, same thing. Uh, you can hover over those. It'll show you what you got for that. I wanted to show you real quick our compare weather. Um, I had done these in a different um, scenario. And well, actually here, I did this one with those multiple spots. Um, so if you go to compare weather, you can set this comparison up, which is kind of cool. And uh, in this case, I ran two parameters. I ran a high um, prescription parameter, and then I had that moderate one that we had been working with. I'm going to switch to rate of spread here. And then I'm going to add in my uh, area of interest, which is that bound, you know, burn unit boundary. So you can see what, what I've done is I've grabbed um, my model output from MTT. I could also do this with the other, uh, other types of models up here on the upper part. And then I pick, you You run the model the different times with the different weather inputs that you want to use. So that's what this is here. So I had a moderate and a high, and you run those separately. And then anything that falls within your landscape area becomes available in a drop down list here. Um, and then I can decide which ones I want to look at next to each other. I just had two. so. I've got my moderate on the left and my high, which I and what I did is I just dropped the fuel moistures. So you can see here moderate on the left had that 789 that we had pretty much used throughout the whole presentation. And then on the right, I dropped the fuel moistures. So maybe a, a higher uh, you know, end of my prescription, lower fuel moistures. So I had four, five, and six, and then I dropped my live fuel moistures here. I left the wind the same. Um, and so I was able to look at both of those next to each other. So what if I had lower fuel moistures, what it would look like? And then I can view, if I click the view on the map, it'll take me to the map interface in Ifty Disk. And then I can turn other layers on and off and really start looking at uh, some of the things that I might you know, be concerned about when it comes to those values and some of the other things we talked about there. So, so that's the compare weather. So it's that you can read about that in the help too. And that's kind of a, a cool feature that we um we I think we got that going this spring. 
So it's taken a little bit to draw this, which is why there's, okay, so there we go. There's the spot fires that I ran initially. Um, and then that was under the moderate conditions. And then if I clicked the high, it'll pull out those. Remember, I reran it with lower fuel moistures. So this would be the output with the lower fuel moistures. And you can see, obviously, our, our spot fires get a lot bigger. And then in our reference layers is where we can add all those different layers that we had been looking at. Um, so I actually, you know, I had that boundary um, for the Forest Service boundary, which was important to me. So I can turn that on. So those green lines just popped in. And then if I scroll down here, um, we can look at the fire environment and safety. And that's where um, there's the potential control locations layer. So I can turn that on. Um, so that's that. We could look at that more closely if we wanted to. Um, and then here's the suppression difficulty index. That's the other one that's in there. So we can look at those. So that's, you know, that's kind of how the, uh, the, the, the layers. Uh, people were asking about uploading shape files. So I can show you that really quick too. And if other folks have questions, I'm just doing this as a filler. But if you all have things you want me to show you, I'm happy to. Um, so the upload shape file, you go to upload shape file, use this widget down here, and then you just say upload file. Uh oh, and there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of pictures of Caroline, <laughs> which kind of cracks me up. Um, but yeah, so I have some I have some in here. I've got this zip file. This is that that was my burn unit boundary. So I would just select that and then say open. It has to be a zip file, kind of like we do in Wiftus. Um, so you, you pick your zip file. It's all the shape file components all put into one zip together. And then you just say open and then upload. I already have it in here, so I'm not going to do it a second time. But once it comes in, then um, then you can go to your workspace and I could go to my folder and then I'm just going to sort again. I'm going to use the filter and I can short, sort by filter or filter by a shape file. And then I can see here's my. Um, this is my polygon for that, and then I can look at it on the map. So that's how that's how you do the upload shapefile. Um, so any data you have, point line polygon, that you want to view on the map, maybe you have some values data or or, or other things that are related to your burn unit, um, you could bring that into IPTDES to look. And again, like I said, we're hoping in time, well, well, maybe there'll be a new widget that lets us upload a landscape. You know, we really want to be able to do that. So stay tuned. Hopefully, we'll able to get that done at some point that's awesome that's awesome okay i'm giving everybody the five minute warning if you have a question or something burning in your brain that you'd like kim to take a look at or one of the other data specialists now is your opportunity before you forget what it was that was burning in your brain <laughs> oh and here's the report i'll just wing through why well, feel free to jump in though like i said i just want to show your report yeah i've got a question were... yeah go ahead so you showed us how to um, go into the landscape and change fuel models based on um, different criteria. Is yep. there a way to create, um, say for our, our forest, if I'm working around the forest, create um, a unique um, edited base layer? So if I then go into a burn and I add a, another unit or something else nearby, I don't have to go in and manipulate the 2020 layer again. I can just say, hey, mm -hmm. reference, reference my saved edited yeah. forest layer. Yes, absolutely. So if you brought in, so if we went to, um, well, let me just go back. So if you're going to create, if we, starting from scratch, if you're going to start from zero, for example, and you're going to create a landscape. You could go in there, decide where you're going to. I'll just pick a spot just for fun, and say we want to go into this area. Um, here, I'll just go. It, we'll just since we're over, I'm over here in Boise, say northeast of Boise, and I want to look at this part of the Boise National Forest. I could pull on, you know, pull that up. And like I said, because we can do up to 10 million acres now, you could technically get the entire Boise National Forest. And make a make a land make a layer. So pick your 40 fuel models. Say Boise, um, 
National Forest. And I'm going to draw my box of encompass. I won't do the whole thing here because it'll take forever, but I could draw a box around the whole Boise National Forest. So I'm just going to draw a small box here for fun. Give it a name. Um, this will we'll just make this a test layer. And then I'm going to go get that. So Landfire is going to, I'm going to go out and grab that Landfire. Now it's going to go grab my Landfire. Now you could go in, you have your Boise National Forest layer, and you're going to like, I'm going to make a whole bunch of edits so I know this for this year is reflects all of our treatments, et cetera, and save that. Then that becomes your layer to use for whatever analysis you want to do. It can be used throughout IFTDIS. It can be, the only thing we can't do with it right now that people ask about that we have on our list is maybe you've got someone on a district that you want them to use that same landscape. Right now we can't do that, <laughs> which is a little bit frustrating because people do ask us about that a lot. Um, so, but what you could do is give them your rules. You could give them the rules you made and they could implement those rules. But, but you could use that, that landscape over and over again for whatever analysis you wanted to use. So once you okay, did it thanks. once, you'd, you'd be set. Yeah. And like I said, in time, we hope to make it so if you made a landscape like that and then you wanted to share it out, that way the other people didn't have to do their own. You, we, we we're hoping to be able to do that down the road here. I think one of the uh, one of just the caveats to to doing that, and that's that is a complete legit. That's part of the reason why we increased the landscape size from three point the, the max limit from three point five million to twelve million was to that was one of the reasons that you could have your edited landscape in your workspace and use it for whatever you need, whether it's a three hundred thousand acre NEPA project or a four hundred acre prescribed burn. Um, but the one caveat to that that I'll mention is that when you use that landscape to run the models, it's of course going to run the model across the entire landscape. So you're you're and that's just a your waiting time is going to be longer than right if it's bigger. Mm -hmm. um, and you probably don't want to do that um, for the landscape burn probability model. You would want a more you know, you would want to get to the size that you you're really looking at for your project um, because it has impact in terms of relativity. Hey, yeah. Kim, where did we land on the import of, you know, on the Forest Service side, the ability to import fax polygons? I know that was a discussion several years ago, but some of that has to do with, uh, I think, some privacy issues. Well, we have, so we have, so right now I just pulled up, I saw that, that, layer, that question in there from Laura. Um, so we have disturbance history in here. So these are through 20, this is through current. These are updated. Uh, how often, Bree? I forget now. Um, uh, we're, we're getting nightly. getting close to, it used to be nightly where we are, um, we're working on that. There's a, was an issue with our FME server, but um, weekly, they're coming in at least weekly, um, the new so treatments. I, yeah, so if I zoom out. You guys can see all these treatments on here. These are all, yeah. that's where these have come from. So most of them and should be in here. Is that agency limited or is that like, you know, Park Service, DOI, BLM, tribal boundaries, state cooperators? Yeah, it's NIFPORs and NIFPORs and NIF FACs. Anything, anything yeah. that funneled through NIFPORs and FACs. Okay. So that's if I click on one of these, I pick my historic treatment polygon layer, which I'm looking at right now, and I click on it. Now I can look at all the data that came in from, whoops, came in from FACS in this case, because this is a forest service. Well, this one came in from NIFWARS. And then you can scroll down through all of this stuff that's in here. This was created in there in 2017. That, that uh, treatment right there was a, what they call it, West Jim Sage pile seeding, 111 acres. Uh, it was completed on January 2015. So that all came in from, from FACS and NIFPORs, depending on your agency. So in this case, so yes. So the, I guess the answer is, is yes. Um, yeah. And I, and I know there, that you can look at them. I know both the OI and Forest Service are working with our state cooperators um, to get a more Oh, unified shape layers, if you will, to contribute to that since they are outside that group force. Um, That's right. I got yeah. a question here via email here that um, is related to the ability to share projects or treatment for prescribed fire incidents. 
uh, I think that's kind of in alignment with one you already kind of touched on, but the inability or is there an ability to, once you go through this analysis, can you ship it off to say to Van Eltan for evaluation? You know, you can't, the only thing you can share right now that's easy to share is the report. So if you were like, this is that landscape report. Um, these you can download as um, PDFs and share the report part. So like, here's the PDF for that one. Um, that That's all we have the ability to share right now. Um, right. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't could, share a least, project. They could at least get in there, uh, use the same rules, and, and use some of the analysis to then make some additional input, correct? And that, that's how yes. I think I would use that report. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yep. You could, sh you could ship someone a polygon and say, hey, this is the treatment area. Here's my polygon. This is what I'm thinking about for some prescription parameters and give them those. And then they could run that, you know, kind of on their own. Mm -hmm. um, and you could talk nice. through it. But that's, you know, we do want to have a collaboration feature in here. We just haven't had the uh, capacity to build it yet. So it's definitely Where on are those the rules in that one. Oh, so that would be, yeah. So for example, in our, if we went to our workspace, in, so this model, this landscape that I edited earlier, um, I could view edit rules. So this is the edit rules that I created. Um, so these are my, this is my rule set. So I could screen capture this and then ship it off and say, these are the rules I applied. And then that same, that person could apply those same rules. So you have the same lane. So you're basically working from the same landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a little clunky, not as nice as we'd like, but I'm hoping in time, someday there'll be a button where I could click this and say, share this landscape. And then I could pick the users, you know, to do that. So. Sure. Yeah. And, and for those of you who are going to have to drop off here shortly, I'll just keep the recording going since these questions are very applicable to the entire community at this point. Um, and I thank everyone for their attendance. But yeah, thank you guys. Maybe Bree. There's so much we could cover. Um, yeah, there's one. There's a question here. I'll just go ahead and answer if I have a minute. But Andrew asked about reports containing all of the landscape rules that were utilized. Um, they do not. Um, that is a good comment, though, because it's something that we probably could could include for those edited landscapes. Well, in this one, you it does include our our rules. So I edited this landscape, right? This is my edited land. This is a report from my edited landscape. Yeah, I think he means the actual rules is how I read. Oh, the, you know, like, you it's, like it is. I got it you. is the edited landscape, but it doesn't list the rules that were used from. The original landscape is how I read that. Maybe I misinterpreted. Like if you're drilling down to like, how did they change the yes. canopy bulk right. density from one to another? Right. Yes, it doesn't drill down that far. Exactly. Yeah. We know it changed the canopy bulk density, but we we can't go look at what the the actual conversion was. I think that's what you mean. Yeah. That's that's a good question. What else is in here? I don't, we might, I mean, it, it, I, we don't have to show it, but I do want to hit on because I think it's a great way to learn about landscape editing and what your edits are doing to use the develop treatment alternatives module. I just want to hit on, on the fact that we do have in that module a, the ability to see the actual difference. So if you change one fuel model to another, you'll get a grid that shows the difference. And I can actually show that, Kim, if you want me to, if people are interested. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know. think I have one in here. It's a little more, it's a little bit more technical, but it's, I think it's, it, it still really helps me learn what my edits are actually doing. So I'm going to bravely try to take the screen. Here. I will stop sharing. Yes. So yeah, we do have that develop treatment alternatives under the strategic planning part of IFTDIS. That then, so that's yes. like I showed you compare weather. So the develop treatment alternatives is kind of a compare landscape, essentially. So can you see my screen? Super helpful for yeah. you. Yeah. that. Yep. And we could um, do another. We could do another presentation, Jen, and maybe down the road a ways we could talk about this for NEPA. Yeah. Yes. Well, I have on a list for spring. Okay. 
So, um, so I'm in the development, develop treatment alternatives module, and I've already got something set up. So basically I have a starting landscape and then I do want to just see what the changes are focused within my area of interest. So this is my burn unit. Uh, my starting landscape was the dumbbell burn unit. And then I edited, um, I'm not going to do that because Kim already showed you how to do that, but I have three edited landscapes in in my batch here that that I can compare because it's an exact match to that original landscape outside of my edits. And so you can run models in here and then you can compare the outputs too, which is really powerful and something that we'll show you guys in the future. But you can just you can use this just to compare your landscape edits too. So I basically here are my listed landscapes. I've got my zero landscape. So this is my existing condition, no changes to the land fire data. And I've got three edited landscapes. And so I'm going to select one that I'm going to compare against my original. So I picked one and two, and then I'm going to open the map up. And it's going to load. Um, it's going to load my shapefile in my original landscape. And then if I click compare on map. It's going to start doing some calculations to produce a difference grid, basically. So let me turn this off and. This up a little bit. All right, so this first output, this first change grid is what I mentioned initially, which is basically it highlighted in red. Um, it's giving me this separate output here, the separate layer, um, basically where I had a value change. So I compared a landscape where I simply changed fuel model from one to the other. I think I changed my TU5 to TL1. And it's saying, okay, in every one of these pixels within the burn unit, this is what changed. Um, not super informative, but at least it's telling me that a change happened. It's also going to give me comparisons or of all of the other um, all of the other layers in my land fire data, but I, none of those changed. So while I changed it from a TU2 to, to a TL1, it didn't change the canopy cover, right? It just changed that that fuel model. It didn't change stand height. Didn't change didn't change any any of these other standard char canopy characteristics. So that's going to impact fire behavior, right? So if it's still if your resultant fire behavior from your edited landscape still isn't what you want, this is a good place to come because it can kind of help inform why your fire behavior maybe isn't changing. Maybe you're still getting a bunch of crown fire and you don't, that's like, you're like, that's not, that wouldn't happen. Well, none of my canopy characteristics changed, which is vital for um, changing canopy or crown fire potential. So here I changed one, um, I, ch I edited it a little bit differently. I think this is the one where I did change the fuel model, but I also made some adjustments to, no, nope, not that one. Oh, I have to compare on map again, sorry. They're, uh, just so you know, they're taking a little while to draw there. Okay, I'll slow down. Bree's so good at this, she just flies through it like. Sorry, I'll try to not to fly. <laughs> I can't even keep up with her. <laughs> Okay, so this one, I think it's the one I want. So it changed my fuel model, but it also gives me a grid where it changed canopy cover because in my edit, not only did I change TU2 to TL1, I reduced my canopy cover from 55% to 35%. And so here, if I run landscape fire behavior, I would I would potentially see some reduc reduction in my in my crown fire behavior because I changed the canopy cover. So it's really important, I think, and, and helpful to understand what these edits are doing. And this mm -hmm. this difference grid kind of tells you that. So I had overall, yep, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to reduce it. And so you can see that I'm in the cooler tones. If I was in the warmer tones, it means I increased canopy cover, which is going to have an impact on my fire behavior outputs. Um, I also changed the canopy base height. Um, so here I increased it and I can't remember what the, the numbers were on that, but basically it's showing me all of the pixels that that the uh, canopy base height also increased. So anyways, I just wanted to demonstrate that this is here and this is a great learning tool. If you feel really sometimes feel really lost in your edits, 
you can come here and do these comparisons back to your original landscape to see what's actually changing and if that's really what your intention was. So that's all I yeah, have to show. That's great. Can you show where that is on the cycle, Brie? Again, yep. just under and then so cycle. Keep in mind, yeah. Strategic plan. Yeah. Keep strategic in mind there's planning. a lot of help. There's a lot of help on this. And we actually have two kind of case studies that are tutorials that'll walk you through how to do it step by step and see how someone else did it. So it's Again, a lot of people are using this for NEPA, showing the alternative stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the tutorials are, or a case study using it for NEPA. So if you look in the user support center, um, you'll find that in there. Uh, I think it would be really, it's really worthwhile to check out if you want to use it for that. Yep, we've got some of those case studies under resources, kind of on the bottom of that table of contents. Yeah, that's right. Additional resources. Yeah. Cool. I know we're running over, Jen. You probably want to wrap it no. up. But, um. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to rein us in because we're finally getting down to that, that yeah. not quite trickle. And I appreciate all the efforts today and really good answers, really great questions. Again, yes. keep in mind, I mean, all of these applications that we have out there, folks, it's in response to your feedback and your input. And so, you know, don't be shy to send the IFTDIS team your input, your feedback. You saw there's a great help uh, application there. Lots of good tidbits in there that you can follow up with this conversation. This recording will be posted, obviously, in the fields community, but um, uh, until we can get this more interagency, I know some of our cross-boundary partners won't be able to see that. So I will direct you back to the IFTDIS site for some follow-up conversation there. Uh, next week, we have fields treatments, effectiveness monitoring, and then uh, and fire effects monitoring with I think Beth Buchanan and Duncan Lutz are going to join us, maybe a few other folks from the Washington office. And then, the, and then we're going to end the season with success stories. So if you have a success story to share, feel free to send it to me at my email. Otherwise, we're going to bring in some of our public affairs officers and, and feel free to share with your public affairs officers on that same note. Um, maybe uh, you guys can have a more integrated uh, approach to how to share your success because we are horrible at sharing our success. Really good at getting in trouble and staying in the media for negative yeah. things that are that are like less than one percent of the time. Um, but this is a, a new a new stroke of putting additional energy into celebrating all the good stuff we do and focusing on the good stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna end the recording. And again, thanks to our speakers today. Yeah, thanks, Jen. As thanks for having us again. And